I'm Casey Cooper. Welcome to Sweetwater's Gear Fest 2022. Hi, this is Blake from the Tone Mob Podcast. It's your boy Beast by J Black. Peter Dankelson from Pete's Diary. It's Adam here, the Orlando drummer. What's up, everybody? I'm Rob Scallon. Sean Daniel here, Gear Fest 2022. Sweetwater, come join us. Hi, I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater. I have the privilege of welcoming you to the day two live stream from GearFest 2022. If you were with us for yesterday's live stream, welcome back. If you're just joining us today, we're so glad you're here. Either way, I hope you enjoy the show we've put together for you. It's gonna be a great day. Now, Sweetwater's GearFest is a unique event in our industry. It's two days when engineers, producers, musicians, DJs, manufacturers, and music and gear fans from around the world come together. We're here to share in our mutual passion and obsession with music and with the instruments and pro audio gear we use to make that music. We're all here to share in the joy of music making and to learn from one another. It's just so inspiring and so much fun. Now, Sweetwater's Gear Fest 2022 is a little bit different than the more than 20 Gear Fests we've done in the past. Multiple elements have come together for this year's celebration of gear and music. First, we have the live stream we did yesterday in this live stream you're watching right now. Yesterday, we had a great lineup. And today, we'll once again be bringing you an incredible lineup of artists, special events and features, and lots of surprises. We've got interviews, we've got performances, special guests, and much more. There'll be something for everyone in today's live stream, so you'll definitely want to stay tuned. Now, just a few examples of what we'll have for you today. We've got virtuoso drummer Jojo Mayer. And speaking of drums, we'll also be checking out the rig of international session drummer Thomas Lang. Keyboardist and producer J3PO will give us an in-depth look at the amazing new Oberheim OBX8, which is an incredible analog synthesizer created as a collaboration by three of the legends of music technology. We'll be looking at how an innocent phone call from one of our friendly competitors turned into a viral sensation. Jason Richardson from All That Remains will be here. We'll also be screening a new music video from live loop artist Elise Tro that was shot right here at Sweetwater. We've got Hannah Welton. Calvin Rogers, Matt Hafey, and I'll be sitting down to chat with Shavo Adagian from System of a Down. And as long as that list is, we've still barely scratched the surface of everything you'll see during this live stream. But we're not stopping there. This year, GearFest actually extends beyond just the two-day event we've held in the past. This year, we invited a select group of manufacturers to our campus here in Fort Wayne, Indiana. They've taken over our conference rooms, they've taken over our training rooms, and they've put up booths, and they're holding a mini trade show. We've invited nearly three dozen of the biggest content creators out there to come to the trade show and create videos and other content. So GearFest really started early this week, and it will continue through the next few weeks as those content creators release all that video they captured while they were here. I've been talking with a lot of the content creators over the last few days, and man, I'm really excited to see what they'll be posting. You'll also be able to see full versions of all the videos we'll be showing you here during the live stream on Sweetwater's YouTube channel, so be sure to subscribe there so you can see it all. Then, use hashtag GearFest to find all the GearFest-related content that's created and posted to YouTube and your favorite social media platforms. I want to point out one other thing. Within that GearFest name, there's an important word, and you might think it was fest, but maybe that's not so important. No, I'm referring to the gear part of the GearFest name. Gear is what this is all about. We all love gear. We research it. We watch videos. We plan what we're going to get to perfect our rigs, and it's, it's just a very cool obsession. And it's all with the goal of having the tools we need to be more creative when we're making music. Plus, I mean, you got to admit it, gear's just a ton of fun. Well, if you're as gear-obsessed as we all are here at Sweetwater, 
You'll be thrilled to know that GearFest also means super exciting deals on all the gear that you want and need for your studio and live rigs. You'll find thousands of great deals tagged on Sweetwater.com, and I'm going to let you in on a little secret as long as you don't tell anybody else. There are even more unlisted deals that are available during GearFest that you can only learn about by calling your sales engineer. So don't be shy. Pick up the phone, call your sales engineer, and get even more fantastic deals this weekend. And we've got great financing offers available right now that will make it even easier for you to get the gear you need. Now, speaking of gear, what could be better than free gear? Well, I have the answer. Almost nothing. Almost nothing is better than free gear. So GearFest also means you have multiple chances to win free gear. Yesterday, we gave away a massive home studio collection to a lucky winner. Plus, we gave away two autograph pedals from Joe Bonamassa and Eric Johnson. What are we giving away today? How can you win? You got to stay tuned. Later in this live stream, all will be revealed, and we'll be giving away a ton of great gear. The other part of GearFest, of course, is music. And today, you'll be hearing great music courtesy of our house band with our friend Jared James Nichols. Jared, great to have you and the band here today. Thanks for coming in. Jared's latest EP is Shadow Dancer, and you'll definitely want to check that out. He's also playing live dates this fall, and he has a new album on the way as well. We'll be talking about that later. We're looking forward to hearing you jam today, Jared. So settle in. We've got a bunch of great things on the way during this live stream. To kick things off, something really fun for you. There are those of us who we consider ourselves pretty expert with gear. Some of us might even be able to identify a particular piece of gear just by hearing it. But how many of us could identify a piece of gear just by touching it? That was the challenge that our friend Josh Scott from JHS Pedal set for himself. Check this out. In celebration of Sweetwater's Gear Fest, we're going to do something here that really has nothing to do with Gear Fest. It just has everything to do with fun. So I know a lot about pedals, and I've been challenged here by the team to identify 10 pedals while being blindfolded and having no audio reference. So this is purely from touch which is weird and kind of pointless, but we're doing it anyway, because you got to make content. All right. This is what, this is like I'm in a Jason Bourne movie. Watch Bruce. Okay. That kind of hurts. You okay? I mean, I'm, I'll, I've it? been through worse. You got it? I grew up in Alabama. Are you okay. okay? Okay. This is normal stuff. All right. I'm just going to close my eyes too. It's more comfortable. Plus it gets me in tune with myself. Are you prepared? Yeah, I was born for this, I think. Here's the first one. One of, one of ten. This is a love pedal, love tone. I mean, yeah, it's a love tone. Four controls. Brown source? Uh, one more guess. I, but it is a love yep. pedal? Okay, I got that right. Crap. Is it? It's a, oh, it's a big cheese. Okay. Crap. Next. Always check the rotary on a big cheese blindfolded. God, I feel like a failure. So I'm one for one? Half point. That's, come on. <laughs> this is a K. Crap, these are impossible to distinguish. It's a K. It's either the yellow, fuzz, the red, wah, or the blue tremolo. Can I have a hint? Think about who picked it out for you. I'm, I'm the one that picked it out for you, but... It's the fuzz, because you the edge use it. Exactly. All right. I like this game. I feel powerful. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Wait. There's There's a, a, that's, that's a temple plate. Yeah, exactly. This is a way huge pedal. Wow. And it's a red llama. Wow, I said it was impossible. <laughs> this is harder than the last one. No, it's an EHX pedal. Right? No. Yes or no? Yep. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's one of two pedals, a small clone or a small stone. Yeah? No? I'm not saying anything. Huh. He's well, for the whole point. Oh, it's a three-way switch. It's a three-way switch. Okay, 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 okay. Yep. I should I should have that. All right, so it's not what I said, obviously, because that would be a two-way switch. What is this? LED, LED, Holy Grail? Yay. The LED triggered me to remember Hall Flurb Spring, because the other ones don't, the older models don't have that. Is there a pedal here? Yep. This is a line six. Oh, this is impossible too. Hold on. 
Yeah. Well, right, a couple of mine had the stickers. Push it forward a little bit so it's in the camera. There you go. Uh, I mean, they're all the same, <laughs> but, and these, this doesn't have the stickers. I wonder, is there a way to know? There's not a way There's to also know. context. There is. Context? I mean, yeah. There's context? I picked these all out. I did, but, but, what I, but what I tricked you? I well, you. Well, then I would just... Okay, context here would be, if you hand me this, what's the greatest of the bunches to deal for? Okay. Yeah! All right. What number are we on? Uh, that was five. five. That's number five. This is the best content that's ever been on the Sweetwater channel. And that's no disrespect, because there's been some great content. But this is, this is like a game show. I love that I'm like... Forcefully closing my eyes. Under the Do you feel like your other senses have increased? Yeah, I can smell things from like miles away. Do you think you can smell away. what pedal it was? Probably not. Two knobs. Is this is a boss pedal, correct? It, but it's not. It's it, that would be a silver screw if it is. Can someone help me out here? Is that a silver screw? You're doing great. Yeah, is this doing, a boss silver you're screw? Doing good. Yep, yeah. You're doing okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Really. C two. Dang, bro. Dang, holy crap. Okay. Yeah. This is really light. I'm gonna be blown away if you get this. What is that? It's a Keely compressor. My gosh. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Jeez. It's the LED bezel that gave that away. Okay. This is a 10 series power series. Two jacks means it's a mono power series. I don't have any way of knowing, I don't think. It could be a TS10 or a Fat Cat. It could be a... Don't overthink it. TS10? Nailed it. Okay. <laughs> oh my lord. What is happening here? Oh, there's the... I was like, there's no... Fun. That's really weird spacing. The pedal I think it is, I swore there was a power jack on. Is that a power jack? Yeah. Spacing the switch. Is it the, it's that rat clone to Marzio very metal? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, this is the final one. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's a tone bender. clips in the middle on the back plate. I this one's tough. I'll say the 1.5. Is it the 1.5? Yeah. Okay. Is that it? You did it. You completed it. Excellent. <sighs> you did it. I hope you have fun at Gear Fest. I'm really glad that I'm a big enough nerd to score 9.5 on a blind pedal feeling test anyway have a good time and uh just buy stuff because like now you just need to buy something you watch a video and you buy stuff that's how the world works see ya there's only one word for that and i think that word is ludicrous i mean I think I could get some of the companies that make certain pedals, like maybe the Tone Bender. I could figure out that was a Tone Bender, but man, I don't think I could nail the specific pedals like Josh did. I'm, I'm seriously impressed. Now, our next guest knows a thing or two about pedals. In fact, just a few years ago, he came here to Sweetwater, and we put together the world's largest pedal board with him. We actually set a world record. This is Rob Scallon. It's great yeah, to have you here, man. It's great to be here. Yeah. This, is, this is really cool. I feel like I'm on a talk show. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I, well, I guess I am. You're uh, yeah. talking, so there we go. I guess I am. <laughs> and yeah, doing that uh, world's largest pedal board, that's one of the, I think that's one of the coolest videos I've ever made. Yeah. And it was so fun. And I got to meet Josh as well, speaking of him. Big fan of his channel ever since. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Do you think mm -hmm. you could identify the pedals? No way. No, <laughs> no way. I probably couldn't identify my own pedal board. Yeah. <laughs> I, I switch them around a lot. So, right, right. yeah, no, I would not be able to. He's, right. on, he's on another level. Yeah. Right. Has anybody set out to break the record? Does the rec record still stand? Uh, yeah, the rec to my knowledge, the record still stands. I, I remember when we were making it, 
I was a little worried because there's always a risk with those types of things. Like some other group of people just might have happened to do it by one more pedal like the week before. <laughs> yeah, you're not really sure. And I remember we found one video maybe two months prior to when we were going to actually start filming where someone claimed to have the record. Yeah. And they were really close to what we were going to have. And uh, so it was kind of a sigh of relief, like, okay, cool, they got to like 320 or something. And right. we were, we were tri planning on trying, you know, 350. But, yeah, that was such a cool Yeah, project. that was fun. That, yeah, that it was, was really, really fun. We even I, I got, like, Alex Lifeson came in and played through yeah, it. Yeah, I know. I mean, it was just crazy. Yeah, I know. It was and, and, and that was completely a surprise <laughs> to me. I wasn't right. expecting him to. Right. Uh, I, there was a great comment on that video that was like, if you w make the world's largest pedal board, like Alex Life and just shows up. <laughs> it's like you just open a rush portal. <laughs> yeah, that was a really great time. I, st I still feel a little bit of excitement and stress about like, oh, is this gonna work? Even though I know it already happened. Right, so long ago. Right. But that, yeah, that, that was a really, that was a really good time. Right. Yeah. Right. Really, really cool. So you've been hanging out here at uh, yep. not just hanging out. You've been participating yeah. in Gearfish, man. You were part of the rodeo game. Yeah, it was it's so fun, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't really know what I was getting myself into, but um, it was it was really really great. I think we we came out on top. Yeah. And uh, so you got the trophy. I did. Yeah. <laughs> so so it's gonna be at home with me pretty soon. It was, nice. it was, it was a good time. And nice. and of course with events like this. You know, my, my favorite part is always just getting to hang out with other musicians and creators, you know, especially as a YouTube creator, you, you know, so much of my world is, so much of my work is just me and a few really talented friends that I have. Right. And you don't really have, you don't really get to see your uh, colleagues or coworkers that often in that sense. And, and uh, yeah, my, my favorite part of being at these events uh, is, is getting to hang out with the other musicians and yeah. YouTube creators and, uh, just like, oh, there's other people that are as nuts about this as I am. This is cool, you <laughs> yeah. know. It's it's exciting to be around people that are more passionate about these things than you. And um, it's it's rare to be for me. It's rare to be around people that are more passionate about guitars and gear. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but here, that definitely is the case, and that, yeah. that's a very uh, that's a very special thing. That's cool. Well, speaking of guitars and gear, yep. what you hold in there? This is my new signature model wow. with Schecter, my new eight-string multi-scale. So proud of it. It's been a really long time coming, and um, I'm just in love with these guitars. It's it's been, yeah. I'm, I'm just so happy that they're finally out, and that they're at Sweetwater as well, um, which I appreciate. Thank you, Sweetwater. Yeah. Um, and we we have the eight string version, seven and six and lefties, which is a pretty surreal, uh, pretty cool feeling. You know, yeah. it's kind of every box that I, I could possibly check in a signature guitar. You know, line. I think I, I think I have it here, and that's a very. It's just been a very surreal and, and very wonderful um, experience. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. So tell us, what are a few of those boxes that you wanted to check with the signature yeah. guitar? Yeah. Okay. So the newest one um, on on the new uh, the multi scale is the, on the new multi scales is the multi scale. So the the new box the new box that we're checking on this one is just a more kind kind of my goal of having a signature model guitar. I'm going on a bit of a tangent. I said okay. we have limited time, and once you get me started talking about gear, I just don't shut <laughs> up. Um, like music and rollerblading, pretty much. You get me ta talking about that. But um, so what I wanted to do was make an eight string that I had this singular goal of making an eight string that's not just for metal and can do metal and that low gent sound, but also have a much wider range outside of that and and not just um, in the way that it sounds but also in the way that it looks mm -hmm. and in the way that it plays and, and hopefully open the door to people that haven't tried multi-scale and see if we could we could make something that could expand that because I, I feel very passionately about these instruments I think mm -hmm. there's so much excellent music that's just starting to be explored with them and so that was kind of a singular goal and I think one of those new boxes that was being checked is as I continue to learn more about multi-scale guitars and using an eight string in particular is is the fan fret and the multi-scale you know I feel like I was kind of late to the party on it because I, I had my Schecter Omen 8 and I got it as I thought it was just going to be a novelty you know mm -hmm. like my, my job is to make fun music videos and I felt it would make for some fun videos and then I would sell it and move on but um I, ju I just fell in love with it, and 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 recently uh, a bit more uh, soul searching. I don't know, just more knowledge of, of multi scale and more experience playing them. It's it just makes so much sense for so many different reasons to have a different scale length for the top string right. than the bottom. So that's the biggest change right. to these new ones, the biggest box that's being checked. And I think it's way more. 
that not just for the, the sound and the more consistent, reliable tension that you get from the strings um, and all, all the benefits that that provides, but also just ergonomically, it's easier to pick up and play. And because the higher strings are that same, like the highest strings on all of these is a 25 and a half. So very, like maybe your standard scale mm -hmm. length. So the high strings feel like the regular six string guitar that you know and love, and it just has extra strings. And so I feel like this is the most, this is just a far more accessible eight string uh, for people that maybe have never tried it before, because it's gonna feel a lot more like the regular guitar that you're used to, right. and uh, has all these other benefits to it as well. So that's that's the biggest uh, box that's that is awesome, being checked. Man. Yeah. Well, man, congratulations on that. That is a very cool guitar. It looks great with Thanks. the three different models. Certainly there's one that uh, everybody, even if they don't want it to go all the way to the yeah. eight string, they still <laughs> yeah. got other options there to work yeah. on, so very cool. We still have a, a killer six string too. Yeah, so six and seven, it, it, so yeah. got the whole family. Uh, and left-handed. And left-handed, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's left cool. that was another box that was being checked, you know. I, like I had had um, you know, other, other signature models before and I love, love to do a lefty version, but you know, with a smaller company, it's just not, it's just not really possible. Right. And, and now here, I'm able to do that. So even if you play seven string and you're left-handed, there's a model for you. And that's just really, it's really, really cool. Um, it's, it's, a very special, uh, it's a very special thing to be able to be a part of the guitar world in that way and mm -hmm. have a bit of an influence on what, what guitars are out there and in a, another less direct way, what type of music is being made. And I'm, I'm personally really excited to see what music is gonna be made with eight string guitars, extended range. Right. And so if, if I can be a part of kind of pushing people in that direction, that, that's something that's really cool to me. That's cool. Yeah. Man, congratulations. Thank you. And Thank we're you so, so happy you're here at GearFest with us. And man, the record still stands, so all good there <laughs> yep. too. Uh -huh. So man, great to see you. Yeah, great to see Come you too. Come back is again that, soon. Is that it? That's it, man. All right, all right, yeah. All right. <laughs> Appreciate you. So Rob is a great example of one of the, <laughs> so Rob is a Sorry. great example of one of the ways that GearFest 2022 is different from GearFest the past years. This year we've invited nearly three dozen of the top music and gear content creators to come to our campus here in Fort Wayne to capture GearFest so they can share it with you. We've also brought in a select group of manufacturers. They've set up booths in our conference rooms and our massive training center. The content creators are visiting the booths, they're checking out the gear that's on display, they're learning about the products and they're asking a lot of questions. And then they're capturing a ton of video that will be turned into content for their respective YouTube and social media channels. They'll be posting that content over the next few weeks, and you can find it all by searching for hashtag GearFest. In addition, we put together three super cool themed rooms, one for keyboards, one for drums, and one for guitars that are manned by Sweetwater's team of content creators and gear experts. Now, I've been calling these experience rooms because the content creators and Sweetwater sales engineers, they, they visit these rooms and get hands-on with a bunch of great gear. And as you can expect, it's only natural when you put a bunch of players in a room with a bunch of instruments, you're going to get some jam sessions breaking out. I've heard a few of the jams that have come out of these rooms. There's been some great stuff going on. And there's even more happening around the Sweetwater campus during GearFest 2022. For example, there's a true wall of marshals set up in the Sweetwater Pavilion stage where you can experience what it feels like to plug your guitar into seven full-blown stacks of screaming marshals on 10. Needless to say, earplugs are mandatory, but it's an amazing thing. It's surprising how much it changes the way you play when you're being totally pummeled by high decibel sound. If you'd like a behind-the-scenes sneak peek at what's been going on during GearFest 2022 this week, take a look at this clip.
minutes away from the giveaways for day two of GearFest 2022. Very soon, lucky winners will be taking home fantastic free gear. But remember, to win, you have to stay tuned to this live stream. When it's time for the giveaways, I'll be filling you in on complete details that'll tell you how you could be the winner of today's big prizes. So don't go anywhere. The GearFest 2022 Day 2 giveaway is almost here. To whet your appetite a bit more, this year's big Day 2 prize package is a dream rig for guitar players. Plus, we've got special prizes coming your way courtesy of our friends at Dunlop and Way Huge. The winners are going to be very happy. Just check out the reaction of one of our Day 1 winners from yesterday who took home our massive home studio collection prize package. Let's play the clip. Good afternoon. You win. <laughs> oh my god, really? Oh my god, really? <laughs> really? No, no, no. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. Yeah. I can't wait to tell my sales rep. I've, I've been buying everything from you guys for the last three years. Thank well, you. Well, congratulations Bye. and thank you for thank being you. a Sweetwater customer. We appreciate you. <laughs> no, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Have awesome. a great day. <laughs> Bye. Bye. You could be just as happy as our day one winner if you win one of our giveaways today. So stay tuned, it's all happening soon. But before we get to the giveaway, many people don't know that Sweetwater's founder, Chuck Surak, is an accomplished saxophonist. In fact, you can regularly find him on stage in Fort Wayne venues performing with one of the several different bands he plays in. Because he's a sax player, he always dreamed about bringing band and orchestra instruments into Sweetwater. And he wanted to offer the Sweetwater difference to all our customers who play band and orchestra instruments themselves or who have kids and family members who play or want to learn to play. Over the past year or so, that dream's become a reality, and Sweetwater is now offering a full line of band and orchestra instruments of all types, from winds to strings to percussion. But, being Sweetwater, we do things just a little differently than any other retail out there that might sell band and, and orchestra instruments. So check out this video for a look at how we're applying the Sweetwater difference to band and orchestra instruments. Jay, welcome to Sweetwater. Hey, how are you doing hey, today? Very well. Hey, how are you doing, man? Good, how are you? Great, thanks for inviting me down. Oh yeah, we were excited to hear that you're coming into town and wanted to show you our inspection process. Oh yeah, I can't wait. This store is really beautiful. I mean, I've never seen a music store like this really. Thanks, yeah, we opened it in June. We were kind of missing some of our customer needs. They were buying their microphones from us, maybe some other gear, and, and we just didn't have band and orchestra. And so we extended the better offer, uh, a more rounded assortment of product to our customers. And uh, a big part of that is the inspection process that we're excited to show you. Would you like to come yes, check it out? Yes, definitely. Awesome. Jay, this is our inspection area. We inspect every instrument that comes through at, at Sweetwater. And it's just like a checklist you've got here? Yeah, so we have a, a card specific for woodwind, another one for brass, and a third one for strings that outlines the, the points that we want to look at with every instrument to be able to make sure that someone who's a professional has played on it just prior to it leaving our campus. That's a pretty important fact. And then this goes inside the Yeah, the it case? goes inside the case, so they know the person who's, uh, <laughs> who's inspected it. Wow, that is amazing. That is incredible. Yeah, and so we received all 150, which was the first shipment of Better Saxes, into the building yesterday. And so the team is processing those today. And down here at the end, James, who leads our inspection team, he's going to kind of walk us through the process that he does when he uh, actually inspects one of, the, one of the saxophones. The first thing we're going to start with is the case in the box. Once we get to the actual instrument, we're going to check out uh, the finish. We're going to check out all the mechanical. Uh, the keys and all the regulation, all the adjustments and key corks and everything. And then um, I consider the play test one of the most important things, like David was saying. We want to make sure that it plays really well, um, just like it should, before we send it out to its uh, eventual owner. Wow. So these instruments are getting very thoroughly looked looked at before any customer ever receives it. And we like to call that the Sweetwater difference. So like we like to do a little something different than what most people do. You know, that's why I'm so excited that these are going to be here because for me, the customer service is so important. It's a lot to take in. It's kind of crazy, but yeah, it feels good. And I'm just really glad that these instruments are in you guys' hands. This is fantastic. Well, Jay, I'm so glad that you got to come out and see the inspection process. It was, uh, we're real excited to have you on campus and, uh, and be able to show you that. David, that was 
That was incredible. And I'm so excited for everyone who's gonna get one of those saxophones because I know that they're just gonna be in, in top playing condition and they're gonna get this amazing customer service, which is so important to me. Yeah, thanks. We work really hard to take care of every customer and, uh, and just remember that when they are ready to do that, uh, our customers can reach out on sweetwater.com or reach out to their sales engineer and we're happy to help. Great. Cool, well thanks again and uh, glad having you in the store. Yeah, see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. I don't know what you guys think, but I think it's time to do it. I think we should give away a big pile of gear. That's right, it's time for the Gear Fest 2022 Day 2 Giveaways. The Guitar Player's Dream Package that we're giving away today includes everything you need as a guitar player. We've got you covered for acoustic and electric guitars, for amps, for effects, even straps and a portable PA system. The Guitar Player's Dream Package starts off with two fantastic guitars. There's a Martin SC-10E acoustic electric guitar and a top-of-the-line Epiphone USA casino electric guitar. Now you need something to play those guitars through, so you'll also get one of the Sweetwater exclusive Supro Delta King tube amps. And for massive effects power and for direct recording or silent stage gigs or for headphone practicing, you can plug into a Line 6 Helix floor modeling processor. You could, for example, run that Helix through the Bose S1 Pro compact portable PA system that's included in the Guitar Player's Dream Package and get fantastic authentic tones when you can't crank up your Supro amp. And for even more effects power, you'll get all four of IK Multimedia's Amplitude X family of pedals, including the X-Space Reverb, X-Time Delay, X-Drive Overdrive and Distortion, and the X-Vibe Modulation pedals. We'll round things out with two straps for your new guitars from our friends at Levy's, including a Sweetwater exclusive 2.5 inch wide butter leather strap and a 3 inch wide padded leather strap. The Guitar Player's Dream Package has you covered for all your guitar needs, both acoustic and electric. Well, not quite everything. You'll need to supply your own guitar pick, but everything else. To win, click over to sweetwater.com win. You'll be able to register to win until midnight Eastern time tonight. And if you win, you'll be taking home the complete Guitar Player's Dream Package. So head over to sweetwater.com slash win and get registered. You could be the big winner. Good luck. Now, even if you don't win the Guitar Player's Dream Package, you still have two more chances to win free gear at GearFest 2022. Our friends at Dunlop and Wayhuge are providing two pedals for us to give away. One is signed by John Petrucci from Dream Theater, and the other is signed by Richard Fortas from Guns N' Roses. Head over to at Sweetwater Sound at Instagram to find out how you can win one of these signed pedals. Richard and John each sent us personal messages about the pedals they've signed. Check this out. Hey everybody, John Petrucci here. Welcome to Sweetwater's Gear Fest Online 2022. One lucky Sweetwater customer is going to win this autographed John Petrucci signature JP95 Wah by Dunlop. Hey, this is Rich Fortas from Guns Roses and welcome to Sweetwater's Online Gear Fest 2022. One lucky customer is going to win a custom way huge jumbo fuzz. Pleasure to welcome Sweetwater's own Nick DiVirgilio to the stage. Now, many of you know Nick as Sweetwater's drum content creator, but he's also one of the top rated drummers in the world. I mentioned it yesterday, but I got to bring it up again. Big congrats to Nick on being nominated in the best prog rock drummer category in the Modern Drummer Magazine's annual Reader's Poll. Man, such a cool honor. I'm just so excited to be this close to you. I, it is an honor. I'm super excited as well. And thank you for being this close to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> My pleasure. Truly. I mean, amazing things happen at GearFest. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so, man, you had a chance to sit down with Jojo Mayer. Yeah, he's a great guy and really fun to talk to because he's such a student of all things drumming, a great educator. I've been learning from him for a long time. But he's also a really creative guy and an, in, an inventor of gear. You know, he really gets into the weeds and he got together with the folks at Sabian to in, uh, invent these new symbols called anthology, <laughs> where the purpose behind the symbols, where you pick the purpose of the symbol. 
you decide what the symbol's going to do. It's going to ride, it's going to crash, whatever. And that was the, the genesis behind the whole thing. Wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Let's check out the interview. All right, thanks. So, Jojo, let's talk about symbols, your new symbols from Sabian, the anthology series. I've had the pleasure of having them here at Sweetwater. I got to play on them. They are fantastic instruments. Tell us, you know, the, the genesis of this whole project with Sabian. Well, you know, there's a couple of aspects to it. I mean, you know, the most important thing, and this is where everything always starts, like with all the products that I that I created, you know, and definitely the product that, that hit the market. Um, the idea came from something that I want, you know, and that I couldn't find. With anthology, it's like this. Um, um, I've been at close quarters with Mark Love uh, on, on R&D for years. You know, we develop many, many things, and uh, uh, Mark is such a, you know, uh, an inspiring companion because uh, he's curious. You know, he's he's not afraid to deviate from from the norm uh, to create something new. He's adventurous, and, and these are our ideal um, conditions to to get on the collaborations. You know, I want a symbol to be a real crash ride symbol and has the functionality of all of those without compromise. Now, we all know that the idea of a crash ride symbol is nothing new, right? You know, and, and if you have a grip, you know, and you might get a good symbol that does it all for you. However, to be able to produce this in mass quantities has been extremely difficult without making certain compromises. Was like, okay, there's a zone where I can ride it and then it starts to wash out and there's a crash, but it's not as smooth, but I still, can still use it for like a ride. So it might work for a individual drummer, but we never had the technology to really do it throughout the board and go like, okay, this is a, a 22 inch symbol that you can excite with your fingertips. You know, it's, it's, it, it's building up. Uh, usually you can't do that, you know, and you have an 18 inch that I can really go at it and ride it and it doesn't get go out of control. So this idea was at the beginning of, you know, now we could make this symbol, you know, and, and I'd say, and Mark was into it and everybody else was like, oh, Let's give it a go, and I'm and I'm glad they did. You know, it was yeah. it was a lot of work. I'm it glad was you a lot did of too. Work. <laughs> <laughs> it was a lot of work, and 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 it took a minute to actually, uh, you know, it's making a new symbol is like solving a Rubik's cube. Right. You know, you like if you solve one thing, that's okay. Now we have the sweetness, but we lose this, and you go and then you mess it up the other side. So until you have the balance, where like everything sits in the right place. Something takes a long time. We, we made it, you know, we crossed the finish line and I'm, I'm quite happy with uh, what we came up with. Well, they're fantastic instruments. I just recorded with them last week using both crashes, the low bell and the high bell, and a more of a rock sounding song. And they performed incredibly well. They, they washed over distorted guitars, great. So you could play all kinds of style of music with these cymbals. I think they really work in all genres. I mean, you know, for, like for me, like the mark of a great instrument is ad adaptability. Sure. You know, it's adaptability and also that it allows you to project um, at, with ease. You don't have to fight against something. Well, that's so much great information, uh, Jojo. Thank you so much. And I think you've, you've created a really fun and very musical product. I, I can totally attest to how cool they are and fun they are to play, and they sound really Thank beautiful you. to the ear. And would love to have you here to Sweetwater someday. I hope that happens, and wish you nothing but the best of luck, and all the, wishing you the best for all the gigs you have coming up in Europe. I think that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well, all the best to, to you guys. You, you're doing a great job. It's fantastic, like the platform that you that you built. You know, it's uh, I'm I'm a Sweetwater customer. You know, I I, I shop from you, and uh, it's it's great. Well, have a great day and a great rest of your evening. And thanks again. And we'll hopefully we'll talk to you again soon. 
Absolutely. Bye, Have man. a good evening. Cheers. Bye. Ciao. Bye bye. Hey everyone, Jared James Nichols here for Sweetwater. It's the super duper Sweetwater sale. You guys are invited. These are pickups that pickups that go in your guitar. We have a uh, tune. This is the tuner. It keeps your string strings on. Comes in a set of six tuners. We also have picks, and here's the grand finale. This guitar, it's gold. This is gonna be the big sale. Look, it's gold. It's an amazing guitar. This is part of the sale. You gotta call your Sweetwater sales rep right now to Sweetwater sales engineer. They're gonna help you get it. They're gonna give you free candy. Jared James Nichols. Mitch, my friend. Man, tearing it up. You guys sound awesome. Thank you, brother. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. So, man, I'm watching the commercial, and clearly, you're gunning for my gig here, brother. I'm just waiting for you to, you know, <laughs> calm down a little bit, and maybe I can swoop in and take I'm gonna it. I'm going to find a red jacket, though. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So what was the story? Where did that come from? So uh, last time I was visiting my Sweetwater family, it was right before April Fool's, and they had an idea that we could make this super funny April Fool's joke video and potentially put it out there and maybe people would think it was real, but right. it was a little crazy. At the end, the part you didn't see is me jumping through the table, <laughs> um, but it was super funny. I'm so glad they played it. Yeah, absolutely. Now that's not a real sale, but of course there is a real sale going on this weekend all through GearFest. So be sure you hop over to Sweetwater.com, check out all the thousands of deals there up to 60% off. Call your Sweetwater sales engineer for more unlisted deals and also check out the financing options. It's a great weekend to buy gear. And with that said, man, Tell me about the band. Oh, yeah. Uh, hailing from St. Louis, my friend and yours on the bass guitar, Elvis. Elvis. And then back here from Gothenburg, Sweden, longtime drummer, Mr. Dennis Holm. Dennis, great to have you guys here, man. Sounds great. We're Sounds glad fantastic. to be here. Yeah. So you got the new EP, Shadow yeah. Dancer. Mm -hmm. What else are you working on? So the big news is we have uh, a full-length record coming out. Nice. September 16th. So excited about it. Yeah. Uh, feels good to be back on the road. Uh, we just did about nine weeks. We were supporting... Zach Wild, Black Label Society, doing our own shows. We're getting ready for some festivals. It's just, I'm glad to be out playing music again. Man, that's so cool. It's that's great. so cool. So tell me more about the album. Where'd you record it? So we recorded the record at Blackbird Studios in Nashville, Tennessee. Nice. And we also might have used <coughs> Sweetwater Studios. Might have. To record parts <laughs> of the record as well. Nice. Which is incredible that we got to use that um, amazing room. And uh, we recorded everything straight to tape. Beautiful. That was, that was pretty cool. Beautiful. I love Kinda it. Kind of scary, but cool. Yeah, that's yeah. great, man. Well, every time I hang out with you and I see you play, I think, man, I'm going home. I'm taking all those extra pickups off my guitar because one pickup and your thumb's all you need, right? Yeah, it's weird. I'm a lefty, and uh, I never got along with picks, and I originally pulled the pickup up because uh, I needed my finger space. Right. So now, after all these years, I'm still doing it. Yeah, it works. It works for me. What more do you need? That's it, man. Prove it to us. Let's hear you play something. All right, let's play. This is a brand new single. This one's called Hardwired. Right on.
just love to hear you moan Your love is poison But I can't walk out that door There ain't no changing Your river way Hard mind to love you No matter what you do Hard mind to love you Even when you won't be true Then you won't Cause I'm hard wine, up wine to love you, yeah. Why do I love the way that you talk down to me, girl? Even when you owe me, you dig your nails in deep. There ain't no changing, I get off on pain. No matter what you do, hard mind to love you, even when you won't be true. Then you walk on me. I can't break free, cause I'm hard mind to love you. Everybody at Sweetwater, this is Thomas Lang. Come on and check out my studio. This is my uh, office studio and uh, teaching facility. Also, my drum store, Westlake Drum Center. It's a snare drum roll. Drum roll for the drum roll, please. Kids, it's a beautiful rose uh, copper uh, collector series kit. This is a Porsche red uh, black chrome. These are collector series 24 by 14 kick drums from my red uh, hot rod red kit. Check out. This room. It's actually not mine. This is Terry's gone. Terry Bozio has one of his kids here because he comes here, he teaches, and uh, records lessons uh, at the studio here as well. So I've got Terry's kid here, which is awesome because then I can sneak in here and noodle around on Terry's kid all the time. I love my minor percussion here. I have rolling kits, TD-17s, TD-50s, you know, TD-75. Here's another room in my studio. It's a great super dry room. Two Universal Audio X8Ps in here, uh, all mic'd up. Another room for recording, super dry. And here's another room, check this out. Oh, hello, more gear. It's a beautiful Roland uh, TD-75 kit. I've got 24 track recording capability also in this room. So, you know, you can have a little mini band jam and recording session here. Hello, drums. Hey, drums. Yo, drums. Drums from top to bottom here. 
drums on the on the floor and drums on the ceiling. Westlake Drum Center. This is the control room. Let's just have a quick peek in here. I moved the desk from here into the studio because I was working alone. Now it's going back here into the control room. AC30 is great. And I've got some Black Star bass amps and guitar amps. This is my main studio room. I do all my filming here, as you can see. Camera set up, I've got many cameras, tons of different cameras. And uh, here's the video switcher for our live streaming. Piano black lacquer with black chrome hardware kits. I've had these for quite some time and I love them. These are all custom made. They've got the leather hoops. Uh, these are maple mahogany shells. All the drums also have internal microphones, the May internal miking system on all of them. So I have options of miking on the outside with condensers or inside with dynamic microphones or outside with dynamic. I can blend the inside and outside microphones. I have blend modules also by Randy May. Five piece kind of session kit. I switch out snares on that kit a bunch and uh, depending on what I'm recording. And here is my other kit, a double bass drum uh, rototone kit set up. And these are 24 by 14 collect the series maple mahogany kick drums, identical shells and black chrome hardware and everything. I have a, a pancake gong drum that I converted into a kind of open sounding kick drum. And this is of course the W rack and hardware. I use my minor cymbals. This is the Thomas Lang super stack here. I have two of them on my kit because I like the trashiness of these. I use Vic Firth drumsticks, Thomas Lang signature model and Remo drum heads on everything. On this kit at the moment I have pinstripe heads, which is unusual for me, but they work really well on the rototoms. I use Audix microphones, all Audix. You can see there's a D6 here. Um, I've got the C112s, the 25As. I've got D2s, D4s, D6s, and I've got an i5 on the snare, of course. I record here, I've got it all mic'd up and all lit up and cameras everywhere. There's cameras back there, there's foot cameras, there's this camera, uh, I've got overhead cameras, of course. So I go from my mics into the uh, stage box into my Universal Audio uh, X8Ps. I've got four of those here, and these are amazing. I love these. Oh, and I use all MCD uh, pedals by Drumwork. Thomas Lang Super Stack. This is a 19-inch uh, medium crash. I've got a, a Byzance extra dry splash here. I've got a, a stack here, trash splash, and a 10-inch splash extra dry on top. More stacks. This is a beautiful 20-inch medium crash from the Hand Hammer uh, series. And here's a dual crash. Another Thomas Lang Super Stack. Collect the series Edge snare drum. I've got my i5. Audix snare drum mic tucked away in here. I have a second i5 for these two small rototoms over here. I use these uh, Vic Firth isolation headphones. I love these. So thanks for watching, Sweetwater. I'll see you around. Bye. Now it's my pleasure to welcome to the stage Julian Pollock, better known to the world as J3PO. It's great to have you here, my friend. Hey, Good to see you. So nice to see you again. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. So man, producer, keyboard player, composer, sound designer, the list just goes on and on. You're a busy guy. Hey. Yes, yes indeed. And you got something really cool for us to check out. Yes, I do. So what do we have here? So we have the new Oberheim OBX8. Very nice. Very which nice. Uh, for a lot of Oberheim fans will be very happy because it's been 30, 40 years since we've had the last new Oberheim instrument. And this is all of the classics in one, the OBX, the OBXA, and the OB8. That is super cool. Yes. And this is a collaboration between Tom Oberheim, Marcus yes. Ryle, and of course, Dave Smith, who we lost recently, is such, such a sad thing, but what a tribute yeah. to him having this keyboard uh, yes. available now. So the three of them collaborated to, like you said, kind of bring everything together into one 
amazing Oberheim board. Yes. This has just been blowing up since it was introduced a few weeks ago. Yes, yes it has. So, so tell me what the difference is. You mentioned the three different models that are in there. Is it just the filters that are different or are there other differences? So uh, not only are the filters modeled, or the, the actual filters, um, we also have the oscillators and the LFOs and the envelopes. So you can ch uh, you can choose actually to mix and match various components from the originals or you can have the true originals mm -hmm. and the LFOs and the uh, envelopes were all different wow. so you know it's uh, it's like coffee or wine and you can really dive into the weeds and it's, it's a lot of fun right now this is a completely analog board Absolutely. it is digitally controlled so we have presets and yes. things and why don't you show us some of the presets sure, you've sure, created for this sure here's a real simple one Man, that is that big, rich, lush Oberheim sound. I mean, you, it's, there's no other way to get it, right? You no. kind of got to have the real thing, and this yes. is the real thing. Yes, indeed. Here's another classic preset that a lot of people will be excited about. That classic. Yeah, nice. Instantly recognizable. Exactly. And what's cool, so that's the original X filter, mm -hmm. and uh, here's the XA filter. Just a little bit different. Yeah, 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 definitely. Let's see what else we got here. Here's the here's a beautiful uh, preset that shows off the the, uh, the X filter and the resonance. Lots of real-time control. That's one of the beautiful things with an analog synth like this. Is exactly. You grab a knob and you make changes and the sound changes along with you. That's so cool. Exactly, exactly. Um, here's another kind of 80s mellow synth wave vibe. Beautiful. Yeah. Um, oh, what's cool is um, on the OB X8, uh, sorry, on the OB8, there was an arpeggiator, hmm. and so we have that here too. Fun. Yeah. That is awesome. Give us one more. Okay, sure. Um, here's um, just an, a classic OB sound. That's that sound. I mean, yes. so many of the artists that I just loved back in the day, I mean, they were playing Oberheims. And exactly. This is how you get that sound, is with the real, real Oberheim. And, but it's still with the updates of the, the presets and the yes. digital control, and you got MIDI, you know, I mean, all yes. that stuff is 2022. Exactly. But with the vintage vibe. With that vintage vibe. Yeah. 
Man, thanks so much for coming in and, oh, and sharing this with us. I always enjoy hearing you play. It's cool. just fantastic keyboard. We're so excited. Thank you. Thank great you. to see you. Likewise. Likewise. My thanks to J3PO. It's just great to have him stop by GearFest 2022. And man, what a fantastic new keyboard from three synth legends. Tom Oberheim, Marcus Ryle, and of course Dave Smith. There's just nothing like the sounds like a classic analog Oberheim synth and the new OBX8 delivers it all. And I admit it, there's one right there on the top of my dream list of gear. So I'm hoping to have one in my studio soon. Now, did you ever wonder what would happen if you set up two drum kits and invited two amazing drummers to sit down and jam together? We've done a few of these types of drum battles here at Sweetwater in the past, and the results are always just awesome. Which brings us to our next feature, a classic drum battle featuring two incredible drummers, Calvin Rogers and Hannah Welton. Calvin Rogers started playing drums at a very early age in Chicago and went on to perform and record with artists including Ramsey Lewis, R. Kelly, Aretha Franklin, Fred Hammond, and many, many more. Hannah Welton began playing professionally at age 12, and she's played everything from jazz fusion to rock. In 2012, Hannah began playing with Prince's New Power Generation, and following that, she was offered the drum chair in Prince's new band, Third Eye Girl. She can be heard with him on the album Plectrum Electrum, and she toured with Prince until 2015. Here's a look at what happened when Calvin and Hannah faced off on a pair of drum kits right here at Sweetwater. I love that you even brought up just culturally what we're around because yeah. we don't realize how subconscious music is. Yes. You yes, know, and, and just even just walking at the grocery store and we have things called elevator music for a reason. It's like everything is so on a, on a subconscious level that you don't realize that you internalize yeah. the culture around you. Yeah. And uh, it's important to sort of expand and, and get yourself around other things that aren't necessarily a part of your everyday life. And so, but it's, it's, really, it's really cool how much music is used for all of that, you know? So yeah. when you're talking about like elevator music, think about like, we use music to sell everything. everything. We use music to get people in, you know what I'm saying? Like yep. if there's music to, for you to meditate. Like, yep, so it's like, yep. hey, you need to come down, you're having a busy day, turn on music. And yep. you would think, maybe sometimes, I, I know for me, because I hear music so much, I'm thinking like, somebody says, turn on some music to relax and to decompress, and I'm like, I don't wanna hear anything. But that's, right. but, but for some people, that's what it is. But they make, they, they, they have music to sell that jacket you have on. You for know what I'm sure. saying? Like, we <laughs> yeah. use it for everything. So yeah. it's, and it's important. So I, yeah. I totally get that element, you know, yeah. again, that element that says, you know, we have that the, how, how important musically music is to wh wherever we are or what we're doing and the culture and things yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, let's have some fun on our way out of here. Let's okay. do it. Okay. social media, you never quite know what's going to catch fire and go viral. Our next two guests know this very well. I've got songwriter producer Bryce Dubrovsky with me here today, along with his Sweetwater sales engineer Hayden Flack. It's great to have you guys here. Thanks great to be here, Thanks man. Thanks for yeah. stopping by, yeah. man. Surreal. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's fun for us to have you stop by because, man, I've been following this story and it's just been cracking me up. But. Uh, it, you got a phone call, right? I got a phone call. Well, I got a voicemail. A voicemail anyway? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So tell us the story. Uh, so funny thing about it is like this voicemail was actually like a, over a year ago. I just, I saved it because like, I got out of, a kick out of it, you know. Um, I'd show some friends every once in a while, but the choice to put it online, like I thought, I don't know, a few people might enjoy it the way that I did and then pff, like it's been crazy. <laughs> it's so weird. Just exploded. Yeah. Well, let's check out the clip. Let's, sure. uh, let's see what we're talking about. Joe Guitar Center. Just want to touch base there. 
see how you're doing. <clears throat> so if you ever have any questions there. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> it's super easy to just get stuck on one thing there. So <clears throat> always happy to help out. <clears throat> Anything comes to mind there, give us a buzz. All right, Bryce, I'll talk to you soon. Take care. So that actually went on for like three minutes, right? Yeah, it's uh, just over two and a half. That's crazy. <laughs> and then there's that, a bunch of silence at the end, too, which is funny. That, that's <laughs> crazy. So, so Hayden, how did you stumble across this? Well, we saw the video because obviously uh, they blew up because Bryce did a great job with, with uh, how he marketed it. Oh, thank and you. Uh, it came across my desk, and I like to... Uh, pride myself with personality on the phone so we, we saw that and we figured we'd leave a competing voicemail just to let them know that not everybody's quite so boring on the phone <laughs> and uh we ended up hitting it off man it's been great yeah. since. all right well let's yeah. check out that that uh, part of the equation sure hey bryce this is at sweetwater sound giving you a shout because i just got off my computer looking at a hilarious video that you made of a certain competitor of ours leaving you a voicemail that i thought was just great so i wanted to give you a shout dude because number one hilarious video you done good there over here we kind of work one-on-one -on -one, but we actually know who you are and we build relationships not just leave you three minute long voicemails with lots of cl throat clearing in there let me know what i can do brother 800 222 extension thanks bryce that's awesome. So had you guys talked before, or was this the first contact no, you had? No, not prior to that. He was in our system. He had been a customer, but wasn't currently being uh, handled by anybody. So we just swooped in there and uh, right, made right. a call. And yeah. what was your reaction when you got that call? I mean, I was I was super excited because I knew like, oh, this is gonna keep going. Like, what is this? Yeah, right. <laughs> but I didn't, you know, I didn't know it was gonna end up here. I was just like, oh, cool, I have one more video. Yeah. Like, this yeah, will be right. fun. But that one was even bigger than the first one, so it's. Yeah. And then there was a few going. more, right? Yeah, then it kept going. Yeah. <laughs> so what happened next? Um, so I people in the comments, I feel like, saw this coming and were like, oh, you're going to start getting free stuff, man. And I was like, what are you talking about? I'm just making videos. Like, But then uh, I got reached out. Another guy reached out from a different company, and then he joined in the mix, and then he wanted to send me a care package, and Hayden sent me a care package, and it's it's... It Just was a bit of dueling music retail for a while. Yeah, but being like battle water, of the brands. We uh, we came out on top, luckily. Let's <laughs> check that out. Yeah. Bryce, 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 you done good, kid. I want to see some of that ad money. You have three days. Loving regards, Hayden from Sweetwater. We can go down the slide together. Also, I am not kidding about the ad money. I'm still That's working awesome. on that Laffy Taffy. I got so much yeah. left. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Not quite a lifetime supply, but a little, little bit of a while. I'll have right? to get more. Apologies right. to your dentist. Yeah. <laughs> so then we heard about that and said, man, we got to get Bryce out here to Gear Fest. And yeah. Thanks for making the trip out. Thanks for having me. This is so fun. Yeah. Like, what do you yeah. think? What, what have you been seeing? Oh, man. The, the vendor booths have been really fun. Um, like, had some great conversations with reps and stuff. It, it's just the whole thing's been really cool. Yeah. That's so awesome. That's so awesome. Well, guys, that, that, that's just so fun. I mean, uh, you can't help but laugh and, sure, yeah. and, and enjoy it. And it's friendly competition and all that. But we're glad we won. Yeah. <laughs> we always do. <laughs> we'll say we did. Who knows what happens next? Though. Yeah, what are you going to get in the mail next? Yeah, after this, what are you going to be invited to? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? No doubt, buddy. Yeah, we've been building the studio, too. So it's been fun just on my end as a sales engineer just to be able to be involved and help him hit his tone goals. So yeah, right. it's been really fun. It's that personal contact thing, right? Mm, yeah, even just having that is going to be super helpful, too. So yeah. it's like many reasons this has been cool. So That's great. We still have to go down the slide together. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't done that yet, <laughs> but we're going to. There's your next we're video. We're going to have to break <laughs> the rule <laughs> two at a time. All right, thanks, guys. So glad you're here, and thanks for coming out for GearFest. Right. Thanks for having me. Right. Next up, we have a really cool story for you. Last weekend was Father's Day, and one of Sweetwater's employees, Gabriel Tucker, wanted to give his father a very special gift. It was a guitar that belonged to Gabe's grandfather. To make the gift even more special, he wanted to restore the guitar as close as possible to its original condition. To make that happen, he turned to the incredible craftsman in the Sweetwater Guitar Workshop. Check out the story and the results in this video. My grandpa's guitar is a Gibson L7 Advanced Archtop. Uh, we're not sure of the exact year, but we think it's somewhere in the late 30s, early 40s. The way that he got the guitar actually is he went into town with the family horse and then he walked his way back home with a guitar and when he showed up everyone was like, well where's the horse? He's like, well, I, the, the guitar, I've got a guitar now. And they're like, but where's the horse? And he's like, I, well I traded it for this guitar. 
there was always kind of these uh, fables about you know him playing with the family get-togethers and the campfires and things like that. Or that was kind of like a really important thing for the families. They'd get together and play, and so that was uh, uh, kind of a legacy that he passed on to my dad. My dad knows that we're coming to do a video in celebration of Father's Day, a little bit of an interview, but he has no idea that the guitar is involved. He has no idea that Grandpa has anything to do with it. So it's, it's gonna be a very big surprise for him. It was absolutely critical for us when we were considering getting this guitar restored that the folks who touched it, the luthiers who worked with it, we really needed someone who understood that this, this is a family heirloom. This isn't just, uh, just a guitar. Very early on in the conversation with Gabe, the main focus was trying to get the guitar to be playable again. I had a little higher goal than that. I didn't want to just restore the playability. I, I wanted to make the guitar have its life and its character again. It's been awesome working with Nathan. Nathan, one, is just like a really stand-up guy. It's been great having conversations with him, but he's also had a really a strong attention to detail. The guitar that was presented for restoration had a lot of decades of off-gassing from the celluloid pickguard. As that happens, the pickguard itself will shrink or start going to pieces. It'll literally start cracking. As that off-gassing occurred, there was a lot of corrosion that happened with metal parts, uh, so much so that when I went to refret the guitar, the frets snapped off as I was pulling them out. They just broke. The fingerboard had quite a bit of wear, especially uh, between frets one, one through five. Plain the fingerboard, put all new frets in, did some restoration to the binding because the binding was coming off. Paid quite a bit of attention to the finish, restoring the finish, cleaning it, polishing it, and made a whole new pickguard from scratch. Uh, this time out of acrylic, so we won't have that off-gassing problem and over time, it'll, it'll be a lot better for the guitar. The history of the stories that go with these instruments uh, is, is a lot of fun a lot of times, and it puts a whole new spin on doing the job. My dad is bigger than life, and he was always playing and singing around the house. Uh, you know, he'd get the guitar out and play it all the time, and, uh, and so that was a big influence on me. I wanted an electric. My dad's guitar was an acoustic, and it's like, what do I do with this? You know, it's big and bulky, and, and I couldn't, you know, I, I couldn't plug it into anything to make, make it louder. But he said, until you get to where you can play well, you know, this is the guitar you need to play. You know, it's just a way to, a, a tribute to him now to have the guitar uh, and a great remembrance of him, so. Oh, my goodness. Is it done? Is it done? Ugh. You're kidding me. Now you're gonna make her cry. Oh my. Wow. And it's in tune. Wow. Oh, it looks great, Gabe. Oh, look at the finish. It looks so much better. Did a good job on the pick guard. What a great sound. A 
Happy Father's Day. Love it. I want my dad to know that I love him, that I admire him, all the musical memories that we've made together, all the, the, the conversations we've had and the advice that he's given me. I can honestly say I wouldn't be the person I am today without him. Nathan, you are an artist. Not, not just luthier, you're an artist. Very thankful for what you've done with it. Chuck, thank you for the honor of letting me work on that guitar. I'm Nathan Worsler. I'm Chuck. I'm Gabe. We want to wish everybody a happy Father's Day. Love you, Dad. Love you. Such a great story, and what fantastic work by the Sweetwater Guitar Workshop Luthiers. I mean, that's, that's really cool. And speaking of really cool, let me introduce my next guest, Jason Richardson, guitarist for All That Remains and solo artist. It's great to have you here, man. Yeah, thanks for having me, thanks man. Thanks for stopping. You've been to GearFest before. Yes, I have, quite a few years ago, but that was, that was a fun one, too. Yeah, man. Mm -hmm. So you got lots going on. A lot, yes, quite yeah. a lot. Tell us. <clears throat> so um, first thing I want to talk about is uh, this fun giveaway that we're uh, Luke Holland and I are pairing up to sell, uh, with Sweetwater to celebrate the release of our new album. Um, we're actually giving away this exact guitar right here that I'm holding, uh, my signature Music Man in Majora Purple. We're giving away this, uh, a pair of 64 Audio Duos, and along with uh, Luke's newest Minel Baby Stack is what he calls it, and a couple pairs of his sticks. Um, all you have to do to enter is uh, follow myself, Luke Holland, and Sweetwater, uh, all on Instagram, um, like and save the post, and then post a, a picture or a picture of you with your current guitar with the hashtag Jason Richardson Axe, or you could just pre-order the new album, our, our new album at JasonRichardsonMerch.com. Any of those will enter you in to win all of that awesome gear. That's would, very cool. Yeah, I would do it. It's pretty easy to enter. Why not? Just get all of that awesome gear and get a, <laughs> get a cool guitar man the whole the whole whole package that's very cool mm -hmm. so when is the album coming out uh july 15th is when okay. it drops and we're going to be announcing the winner like a week or so after that right yep right <clears throat> so the other thing that you have is you have a new plug-in correct yes brand new amp uh amp sim modeled uh directly after all the sounds on the new album you can um all the that's all this there's a f uh, few singles already out mm -hmm. so you can hear exactly what the plug-in you uh sounds like uh and we use beta versions of it for the, the actual mix of the album. So this final version sounds even better than nice. what it does. So uh, yeah, the company's called Mixwave. Uh, it's a relatively new company. And this is just that. I'll just run through a couple little things real quick so you guys can hear some of the presets that are in there. The presets are made for how I play and a Music Man guitar. So you might have to mess with the input and stuff like that. It's just a little bit to cater to how you actually play. But this is what, uh, what the clean one sounds like. about the reverb on that one is it's uh we modeled um my actual hardware bricasti that i personally own oh, nice. that i got from sweetwater nice yeah um <clears throat> so that's what that reverb is on there uh we also um if we go to the rhythm head oh and it's also modeled after a prs archon 50 as well <laughs> um so same with the uh the rhythm sound is also modeled after the prs archon 50 and i think we uh we modeled uh, Archer Klon for the overdrive, and this is what it's trying to uh, recreate. So yeah, and it feels a lot like a real amp, like yeah. as well. It's like definitely, I'm obviously very biased because it's my signature amps in, but it's uh, one of the best that I've ever heard when it comes to just like putting it on a computer and having it react right. that way to the way you actually play. Yeah, it's got that articulate top end where you can really hear the notes even when you're down on the low string and mm -hmm. you're, you're doing yeah, that heavy yeah. stuff. Yeah, they, they absolutely killed it. Uh, this, I love the way that it came out. And then the uh, one thing that I like to do a lot as well with uh, lead sounds is um, the delay that's in there. For some reason, I've kind of got, gotten used to and really like using like a panning delay that goes back and forth instead of just being like, you know, right down the middle. I feel like it makes like a bigger, wider, kind of just like more fun ear candy type sound if it's going like back and forth. So 
you can set that uh, in the plugin as well to just like tempo sync whatever you, any amount of like subdivision or something like that. But this is kind of, or this is uh, what the lead sound sounds like on this. And then you can, uh, if you guys, have, I think it should be stereo, but you can go here going back and forth yeah. in, in there. Um, but yeah, but that's pretty much, um, all right. Oh, another really cool thing with the plugin is, uh, so for the lo-fi sounds, instead of just using an EQ, like, uh, you know, just a carved EQ where it's just like every, only like mids and stuff like that. Um, instead of using that, we found, discovered a microphone called a copper phone mm -hmm. where it just sounds like that. It's like modeled to sound like, like really old and vintage instead of just being only made for an EQ. So we took IR uh, or impulse responses of that Actually, all the IRs in this were sampled at uh, Mixwave Studios. So these are these only all of these cab sims and stuff in there on, uh, only exist in there. But this is what the uh, the lo-fi one sounds like. And again, that's just what that microphone sounds like. It's not right. an EQ or anything like that. So we thought that was really creative, and it's just um, I had never even heard of it until my friend Taylor Larson, who uh, helped st who started Mix Wave uh, along with a couple of our other friends, uh, we used that at the studio. Very so, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Very happy with it. Yeah. Yeah. And you could just tr do a trial of it for 14 days. There you go. Yeah. Right so on. no reason to not check it out. <laughs> Congratulations on the plug-in. Congratulations on the new album coming out very soon. Yep. And everybody should definitely enter. Yep. Win that guitar, win the, the in-ears, exactly. man, the whole package. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. It's awesome. great to see you. Yeah, you too, man. Thanks for coming out to GearFest 2022. Awesome. Thank you for Come having me. Come back soon. Yep. All right. Take care. <laughs> Coming up next, we've got a fantastic music video clip for you to check out. This video is a collaboration between artist Elise Tro, who's well known as a YouTube video creator. In her videos, Elise demonstrates her songwriting, multi-instrumental, and vocal abilities within the context of loop productions. That means that she uses a looper to record and perform her songs in real time, with her playing and singing all the parts. She's fantastically talented. For this video, we put Elise together with our own amazing Sweetwater Studios audio team and our creative video team with the goal of creating a very special production. The teams went all out to create a stage for Elise to work within, then she performed her song playing, looping, and singing all the parts into Ableton Live in real time and doing it all in a single pass. No fixes, no overdubs, no editing. It was truly a meeting of many creative minds pursuing outstanding audio, video, and musical results. The video was debuted about a week ago, and it's already garnered a ton of views and recognition. Check it out. Let's go. 
Hey, this is Matthew K. Hafey from Trivium and Ibaraki. Make sure you'll have an incredible gear fest. And while you're at gear fest, check out the MKH Origins available right now. Originally, when we were planning on making Epiphone MKH, the plan was to grab my 1999 Gibson Les Paul Custom that I got when I was a kid. I sent that over to Epiphone. I said, model this exactly. Check the weight, the playability, the feel, everything about this guitar, and let's make it into the price point that is correct for our fan base and for our supporters, something that I can play the exact same guitar that comes off the music store shelf, that comes from the factory of Epiphone, and it's the same guitar that kids can buy at the music store. Because as a kid, I would always be let down. I'd say, oh, there's my favorite guitar player's guitar, but he plays the $5,000 or the $10,000 version, and that was a different version. So I wanted to make sure the same thing that I use is the same thing people are gonna use when they pick it up in the store. So over the years, as we can see, the original MKHs did incredibly well, the six and seven black and whites. And this time, we wanted to basically give the entire model a new evolution. The reason why they're called Origins is because they're based off the original guitars that people first ever saw me with with Trivium, which would have been the Pull Harder video with the Black Les Paul Custom, and the Gunshot video, which was actually the White Supreme, but I wanted to shift it to be the Les Paul Custom as I like things to match. So so we took the MKH Epiphone that was already perfect, modeled after the old Gibson, and did some modern changes. First one, noticeably, is the new modern cutaway heel. I love the way this feels because it's a mixture of what we felt with the old MKH, but also going back to the way a true Les Paul Custom feels. I feel the accessibility is much better for my playing style. Still currently on the six string, it's a 24 and three quarters inch scale, which I feel it should be. I do have people sometimes ask me, Matt, why not 24 frets? I never really used 24 frets. I prefer 22 personally for six and seven. The seven string did get an evolution. It is now 25.5 inch scale for the seven string. So it's actually, a lot beefier of a tone, heavier playing. It sounds incredible. Went with a thinner neck this time around. So the guitar is lighter, the neck is faster, the neck is thinner. The strap pegs are pretty amazing. It's these diamond style ones. So this way, when someone gets the guitar, brings it out of the box, they can put a strap on it safely and not have the guitar fall if they're jumping around at all. We went with the locking Grover tuners. Now it's not locking in the sense that it's gonna keep your pitch because that's not what I like with the tuners. But what I love about these is you only have to put a little bit of string through, clamps down, and you can get it to where you want it to be in the tuning. The pickups are a huge change. We went with the Fishman MKH Customs. These are three voice Fishmans. Now the way Fishmans have been described to me, they are passive pickups with active technology. However, there is an active voice. That's the one that's down. That's when all the knobs are down. You raise it and it becomes essentially the passive voice. From there, you can also lift up the tone knob um, and there's multiple combinations. As you can see, I'm terrible at math, but there's four and you can go between the three. So there's a lot of, lot of, lot of endless possibilities you could do there. But now you have a single coil tone on both the bridge, the middle, and the neck. And I think that once people are able to play a Les Paul and hear it, and they can hear it sound like that super twangy single coil thing, it's pretty unbelievable. I've never really heard a Les Paul sound that way till my guitar. We went a little bit more modern in the, in the look. Uh, I dropped the rhythm treble thing. I wanted to go with similarities with the guitar where we don't change any of the hardware between the white and the black. It's the same black pickups, it's the same gold hardware, it's the same black knurled knobs. Now why knurled over the classics? I feel like sometimes the classics, when you're playing live, I knock them off. The knurleds, that's not really possible. I feel like they're much stronger, they're much sturdier. Uh, the guitar really has live in mind. Um, since Trivium has been playing live shows since I was 12 and a half, 13 years old, I knew what I needed to happen. It needed to be minimal, it needed to be perfected, it needed to be sleek and modern. Um, it has my signature built in, which I'm always happy about. It has the new truss cover right here, the Les Paul MKH Origins Custom. 
We have this in six and seven string, black and white, and actually a righty and a lefty. Lefties, we heard you loud and clear. You were yelling at me for the last decade that you wanted some left-handed guitar. So we'll have left, right, black, white, six, seven. So Epiphone and Gibson have entrusted in me to have eight guitars this time around. So I hope you love all of them as much as I do. Right now you can get the MKH Epiphone Origins from Sweetwater. So make sure you check it out. You can either get it on their site or you can get it from them in person at one of the coolest, largest retail dealers of all things music right now. Check it out. It's a pleasure to welcome our next guest to the GearFest stage. This is Shavo Adachian. Great to have you here, Shavo. Thanks for having me, bro. Appreciate you coming in for GearFest 2022. Hell yeah. So man, I, I do these interviews with artists and engineers and producers, and there's always a bunch of slashes, like he's a guitar player, composer, but I had to actually make a list for you because you're like bass player, backing vocals, songwriter, video director, stage lighting and design, sitar, Beats, DJ, directing, acting, film scoring, painting, or, I mean, it just goes... They put too much stuff down there. It's all true, though, right? It's, I, I dabble in things, but I'm, I'm a bass player. I play guitar. I write songs, you know. Right. But you're a creative guy, and that's what I want to ask you about, is what drives your creativity in all these different directions? I'd say life drives me. I don't have any special process. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't plan on being this way. It wasn't something that was, like, taught to me. Um, from an early age, I was attracted to music and art. Um, I, I came from Armenia. Uh, I was five years old when I moved to America. And I've always asked for an instrument from my parents. Been like, get me a guitar, because I was always into music, you know, rock. And um, they would always not get me anything, because they were just like, they were f fearful of being me being a starving artist, you know, right, I think. Right. So they always wanted to push me towards, like, you know, uh, doctor, lawyer, and this and that. Anyways, long story short, I just kept on doing what I do. I just kind of pushed, pushed, pushed. My grandma bought me a guitar when I was like, I think 10. 10, 11, mm -hmm. and I haven't looked back, man. Uh, just no lessons, just practiced on my own. Right. Um, when it comes to creativity, I just kind of do. I never sit there and say, I'm gonna write a song. It doesn't work, because I'll never do anything. Uh, it's just, I jam. When I jam, things come out and I record them and then I go back to them and I kind of arrange and rearrange and it just happens, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, that's so cool. So one of your latest projects is North Kingsley. Yes, sir. Tell us about that. Yes, sir. Uh, it started around three and a half years ago. I was working with two new guys. Uh, well, well, I say new because they're not known in the industry. Uh, Ray Hawthorne, vocalist, and then Saro Paparia, he's a producer, makes sick beats, uh, real good arranger. Uh, and we started not knowing what we were going to do. There was no um, format. There was no musical style we were going to do. But we liked all sorts of music. I personally, like I said, from day one, I was into metal, hip-hop, dance music, cultural stuff, um, folk, all of it, mm -hmm. you know, and um, disco, um, which kind of all comes out in North Kingsley. And these guys were also into all that. Uh, the, the singer was from like punk rock bands, hardcore bands in the on the East Coast, and then now he's on the West Coast, and he's dabbled in hip-hop, um, and his lyrics just are really, really thought-provoking and really... Um, really with the times um i really admire his style right. so we started working and we've been evolving you know um we're not signed or nothing i kind of do everything independently and uh, we dropped six tracks during the pandemic it was really rough we um we were supposed to drop april of 2020 but you know march is when it all hit so you know we had to pull things along push right. it along and we made it we dropped the first ep in august of 2020 and then an another one in december but um, like I said, it was just me dropping music. And I also w dropped EPs because I've kind of seen how the ADD generation rules right now. And uh, you drop an album and two songs get recognized and then the rest kind of get thrown out. So I thought, let's make each song valuable mm -hmm. and have people listen to them. And we did that. And as we were doing, the, I dropped the, th the second EP. We were working on three and four. And it just kind of became an album, I feel like. It just, the song started evolving. and. It started getting to a level where I really 
really dig it myself. Like it's it's not just an abstract painting like I thought it was gonna be. It's more nice. of it. So it became an album. So we we're 14 songs in. Uh, make a long story short, where it's being mixed as we speak. Uh, no release date yet because I don't know how I'm gonna release it. Mm -hmm. But I've always um, like. You know, there's, we're in a new era again, so there's many different options uh, how to do it, and uh, I'm going to find a way soon. I might even shop it around, not sure, because I, I love it, so I feel like others would, you yeah, know? Yeah, right. So, yeah, it's it's my free-form creative outlet right now. That's so awesome. Hell yeah. That's so awesome. Thank you, thank you. I mean, we have to mention that Ashdown sponsored you coming in today, and what was your connection with, or what is your connection with Ashdown? Well, those guys rule. So Ashdown is an amazing uh, bass amp company, which mm -hmm. now has moved on to headphones and uh, pedals and all sorts of stuff. And uh, I, I met Dan Gooday when he, when he was 16 years old. He came up to me in, uh, when we were playing, when System of Down was playing in uh, England, uh, the London Astoria. And he came up, and at the time I was playing um, Ampeg, you know, and that was the norm, you know, Ampeg, big sound. This guy comes up, it's just so much realness in him. You know, I just felt really close to him. And then I met, I met his father and I was sold. And I've been with them since. And I never looked back. They're amazing. I swear by the amps. I swear by their products. Uh, the beauty of what I use on stage, I, I use the 1200, and is that it has two separate channels where you can, a volume. You have a hard state and you have the tube. So you can make it as powerful as you want it without losing the warmth of the tube because you can totally gauge that as well so it's a no-brainer for me i am been using it i will be using it it's I, I use it for north kingsley and i will be using it for future um you know uh, projects that's so awesome yeah they rule well man we are grateful for them bringing you in here and me too. great to meet you and congratulations on north kingsley can't wait to hear it thank you bro Gotta thank get you it out here. looking hell forward yeah. to checking it out hell yeah brother all right enjoy your fest 2022 thank you great to see you you too actually brings us to the end of the day two live stream from GearFest 2022. It just flew by. I mean, this has been so much fun and I'd keep going, but you know, all good things must come to an end. And as the saying goes, you know, I guess that also holds true with this live stream. But that doesn't mean that GearFest 2022 is coming to an end. With the dozens of content creators here on the Sweetwater campus in Fort Wayne over the past week, you know there's going to be a ton of great GearFest content coming out over the next few weeks. You can track it all down on all your favorite social media platforms using hashtag GearFest. Plus, we'll be posting full versions of all the videos you saw clips of during GearFest to our Sweetwater YouTube channel, so be sure you subscribe there to check out the complete interviews, videos, and rig tours we did over the last two days. But I've got even better news for you. The GearFest 2022 event may be wrapping up, but Sweetwater's huge GearFest sale will continue through Tuesday, June 28th. Be sure to check out the thousands of exciting deals on your favorite gear at Sweetwater.com as much as 60% off. And remember that little secret I shared with you. If you contact your Sweetwater sales engineer directly, you can learn about even more unlisted sales and deals. And we're still running those special financing offers, so it's an easy to get the gear you need right now. It's a great time to pick up all the gear you must have for your studio and live rig. Now, what a day we had here at GearFest 2022. It was a real pleasure to do an interview with Jason Richardson of All That Remains, a solo artist as well. We had Hannah Welton and Calvin Rogers drumming together. There were viral TikTok videos and an amazing new analog synthesizer from the legends at Oberheim and Sequential Circuits. One of my favorites was the groundbreaking new music video shot right here at Sweetwater with Elise Tro. I've become a huge fan of her live looping approach to making music. We had Nick DiVirgilio's interview with genre-bending drummer and inventor Jojo Mayer. And I had the pleasure of wrapping it all up with the amazingly prolific and creative Shavo Adagian from System of a Down. I mean, where else could you go see all that and so much more all in one place? Talk about an action-packed hour and a half, and that wasn't even everything that went on here today. We had lucky winners taking home massive gear packages and much, much more. And we certainly can't forget the incredible music from our house band, courtesy of Mr. Jared James Nichols. Jared, so cool to have you in the band here with us for GearFest 2022. Thanks for all the great music. 
Watch for Jared performing near you and do yourself a favor and check out his latest EP, Shadow Dancer, as well as his upcoming album this fall, along with all his music. It's great stuff. Jared, Elvis, Dennis, man, you guys just, you just rock. Now, you're going to hear more from Jared before we're done, but first, I must extend a heartfelt thank you to all the artists, manufacturers, and content creators who took part in GearFest 2022 with us. It's so inspiring to be surrounded by such talented people, and it's been a fantastic week hanging out together. And speaking of talented people, we also have to give it up to the entire family here at Sweetwater, especially the crew behind bringing you this live stream. You guys got to give yourselves a hand. Man. It takes an absolute army of amazing people to put on a show like this, and we're very grateful to everyone. What you're seeing is a result of many months of planning and work, and this dedicated crew did it with smiles and great attitude, so thank you all. And by the way, guys, get ready, get some rest. We'll start planning next year's GearFest in just a few weeks. But most of all, thank you for tuning in to GearFest 2022 and the Day 2 live stream. As I said at the end of yesterday's live stream, it wouldn't be much of a show if you weren't watching it here with us. GearFest is such an amazing, inspiring event, bringing together a truly international community of music makers, and we want to thank each and every one of you for watching. Remember, you can find complete versions of all the videos you saw yesterday and today, and much more when you subscribe to Sweetwater's YouTube channel. And don't forget to use hashtag GearFest to seek out all the content creator videos and posts on all your favorite social media platforms. Thanks again. I'm Mitch Gallagher from Sweetwater, and as of this exact moment, GearFest 2022, the day two live stream, is in the history books. Jared, rock us out, man. Hold on.